All right, we are live here in Nicholsville, Kentucky. William Warfield here with you as uh, we bring you Talking Sports here on Prep Spin. We're doing our uh, duties to social distance ourselves, and uh, I'm excited, man. I got uh, Coach Eddie Brooks of the Frederick Douglas Broncos about to join me here, and uh, we're going to talk a little baseball and talk about how this whole virus thing is impacting him and his team and uh, uh, hear what Coach Brooks has to uh say about uh, all this stuff going on so uh, without further ado coach brooks how are you sir hey doing great i want to uh thank you for having having me on uh obviously social distancing and no baseball has uh, been, been a nightmare for all of us and uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk a little baseball kind of a little bit of normalcy so to speak what's going on in these tough times coach i tell you man uh, I, I miss baseball you know we 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 Thought we were going to get the Sweet 16s in, and then, uh, man, we got into that fifth game of the girls' uh, tournament, and then all of a sudden, you know, rumors start to fly around around the third quarter, and, uh, you know, we find out we're going to do a press conference after the game, and then that's when, you know, everything just kind of came to a halt. Uh, Coach, first off, how are you? How are your family doing? And, uh, yeah, just just tell us how you're doing, Coach. You know, everything is great here. I I mean – Obviously, we're all spending a lot of time together and watching a lot of movies and yeah. <laughs> uh, doing a lot of nothing. But uh, we're, we're all good and healthy so far. Th- so uh, th- thank the good man above for that. Yes, sir. And uh, all is good. And just kind of trying to stay in touch with everybody else through text message, phone calls, and and social media, making sure that every, all everybody else uh, is doing as good good also. So, uh, you know, with all this extra time and everything that you've got right now, Coach, how is, uh, you know, how's Netflix going for you? Whatever you're watching, you know, what's your, <laughs> any favorites yet? I know you're talking baseball movies the other day. Uh, yeah, I made my rounds through. I started watching the, one of the old time movies each day, uh, The Natural, uh, Bull Durham, uh, Eight Men Out. So I uh, haven't uh, watched a good one last night called Full Count. If anybody hadn't seen that, it's a good, it's a great movie. Not a, it's got a little bit of baseball to it, but it's more about a message behind it. Uh, it was on Netflix and enjoy, really enjoyed that movie, kind of a Christian based movie. So had a blast, had a good time watching that one. I was telling you the other day, uh, you know, we were talking back and forth on Facebook a little bit, but uh, Trouble with the Curve was that Clint Eastwood movie that I was talking yes. about. That's- I, I love, love love that one too. Trouble with the Curve, obviously. Uh, uh, Another great one. There's just so many good ones. So I'm just trying to kind of start it on the way back machine and working my way up to some of the better ones. Obviously, everybody's favorite, Sandlot. <laughs> so I haven't oh, yeah, made it there. Definitely. So I, that's kind of working my way up through the uh, progression. And in turn, you know, sending messages to my players, trying to stay in contact with them, work out schedules in, in our text message group and uh, giving them ideas and post on Twitter of some unique ways to stay in shape and stay ready in case uh, we're able to get on the field. Um, and that's all we can do is, is do our due diligence and, and be ready for when the time has come. But to help speed up the case, to give us opportunity to be ready, is we have to do what's asked for us by our government and everything else so we can slow down the uh, the spread of, spread of this virus. Yeah, they, they push us back to April 20th, Coach, uh, the, latest, the latest that we've heard. Um, so mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't know, I don't know how that impacts the regular season schedule for you or not. But uh, I would imagine, you know, obviously, you know, you guys were just starting to practice and played a couple, couple scrimmages. I would imagine. Yeah, well, at that point in time, when we got when the uh, when it came down, we were we already had two scrimmage games and we were set to open up on Monday, like everybody else across the state. Um, and I haven't went back and counted it. Uh, when we were, we were due to open up on the uh, the 13th, I still gave me 25 games scheduled on my on my, on our, my schedule. So I'd say I'm pretty close to what everybody else is within the state. Now I would say at losing another week, we're probably all going to be in that 20, 18 to 20 range, and then wow. we'll just have to figure out what as a group which what direction we need to go. Because obviously, I'm sure everybody in the state, like our district. All of our games we have to play because we seed. So we'd have to go back and reformulate what's the best policy for that to get those eight in. And but that's that's neither here nor there. The thing about this whole virus is that, that I hate most, and it's, I have two of them, which is my seniors. Uh, every program has 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 a bunch of seniors, and that's who I feel sorry for. 
the rest of us will, will have next year. Uh, those my two seniors uh, cost them their their, their last last hurrah, uh, their chance to to work and get better, maybe have that uh, shot to get to college and play baseball. And, and I hate that for it, which is Noah Gray and uh, Josh McClure. So I hate that for those two, along with all the other seniors across the state who possibly has lost their senior senior year. Yeah, you you've got a couple of special seniors there, Coach, and uh, you know the, the, I think this whole class this year, this whole senior class this year is uh, pretty good. You know, when you look up and down, especially in your district. Oh Lord, it, it's a nightmare. I mean, I, I think uh, Henry Clay has ten more seniors. Uh, Scott County, they, they're going to have have a couple. Say, uh, Sayers got a couple. Uh, it's just. And then you go on to the 43rd, uh, which the other Lexus schools, I think it's eight or nine for all those schools. So you look, that's just a lot of kids that that uh, this virus is impacting mm-hmm. uh, for, their, for their year. And then not to mention that, all the ones, their graduate, possibly their graduation, walking across. And that's special memories. Uh, you know, that that's who I feel sorry for. And that's why we've got to do our job and do what the, the governor's asked us to do. Yeah. Stay stay away from people so we can get to St. Beat and we can get back to normalcy. I've been passing a lot of baseball in the backyard with my little guy. You know, he's only 10, but, uh, you know, it's, it's hard dealing with that baseball. You know, uh, not only the high school baseball, but, you know, Major League Baseball is not going on right now. I'm used to having, you know, the Major League Baseball TV package and I can always catch the Cubs or whoever I'm watching that night. You know, I'm a big Cubs fan, by the way, Coach, but. Uh, that's, that's a great, great team. I grew up watch, watching the Cubs myself growing up. I was a Cardinal fan because Ozzie Smith was my all-time favorite player. Uh, the infield flip, you know, backflip. Oh, yeah. yes. The, the old eight, 80s Cardinals team loved, you know, you know, I'm getting my fix daily, as you saw on Facebook and posting just a name the all-time, your all-time favorite Lexington, your all-time favorite team from the Lexington, the school that she was at in Lexington. You know, just, just kind of starting chats and getting people going and, it's been entertaining seeing some of these names people put up because in the, and I get messages back. Is it who we played or who we know? I don't know all the ones back. I said, hey, it's your team. You pick it, you know. So yeah. uh, I think today uh, I got posted on there, I, your, your best player you ever played with, best player you ever played against. You know, just trying to stir up, keep, keep my mind occupied because I can only watch so much Netflix. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Um, so – who, who are some of the combinations that are people talking about? I, I know I posted, I said, well, hey, that 2015 West Jessman Colts team led by Coach Jody Hamilton, they had a pretty a good team. run in the state. They, they did. It's um, You had Somebody a couple said the 2000 of, Catholic? The 2000 Catholic team yeah. was, was a great team. Uh, you know, you had the, um, the LCA, I think it was 05 maybe, or 04 LCA team that won it. Uh, posted their, their lineup, you know, um, then I, obviously I'm always going to be biased with our lineup at Lafayette since we went back to back with ours in the uh, late 80s, early 90s right there with with our group. Um, but the, another good buddy of mine posted his Harrison County group, which won a couple. So it's been some great, great, t- great people na- named on there and some of the great players that I forgot about. And it just goes to show – the volume of just how good a baseball is in this area that people don't know is, I think it's probably one of the best kept secrets around. Yeah. What, what do you think? You mentioned Harrison County. What do you think is so special about over there where, you know, it continues to obviously Mac Whitaker is a, a heck of a coach over there, but uh, um, you know, what, what all he's done there has been amazing, you know, hall of fame numbers. Oh, he, what, what coach Mac has done there is, is second to none. And, he got into a town, and the best part about it is, is, is he controls the little league all the way up. So every kid that cut is bred in there is beat his system. Whatever that system is, that's what they all start learning at the age of eight. So the time they get to him at the high school level, they they already have a, a great concept of what he wants. So they've been practicing and doing it for you know seven eight years. You know, you take as Lexington high school coaches here, is we don't have that luxury. We because our feeder program is, is all over. Right. I've got three middle schools that feed our school at Douglas. You know, Lafayette has a couple, three or four. Taste Creek has three or four middle schools. So it's hard for us to get that unit unity and control everything that we'd like. Because, you know, I'm going to do things different than Coach Torrance at Henry Clay or Coach Pointer at Taste Creek or, um, 
Coach Langston and Lafayette. Uh, you know, if I left one of the coaches out, I apologize. But I, but you know, we all do something different that we believe uh, is worth the way it should be done. And what Coach Max done is able to get that in those kids at at eight years old, where we can't until they show up at our at our field. Yeah. And that's a huge, huge difference. So this is uh, the season coming up here is year three. Is that right? Is it- yeah, we're in our third third year, and I, I was super excited about it. Uh, you know, our, our team was. I, I think we were fixing to turn the corner. We had a great year last year. We were, you know, 19 and 17 after two years. Uh, you know, I lost a couple of great players, but I returned everybody, you know, uh, for the most part back. You know, I lost, you know, some, some key opponents, but, but you know, from what I had coming back, I was I was so looking forward to the year. I thought we might, if we caught hot and played our capability, we had a shot to make a good run. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know, the last year, for the most part, I'm starting freshmen now. They're all sophomores. You know, I've got a couple of uh, D1 commits already. I got a freshman who's already committed to Louisville, Thomas Howard. Uh, my shortstop, Julia Sears, already committed to the University of Kentucky. Uh, my center fielder, who just got posted out, uh, is rated as the number one uh, receiver in his class in football, which also uh, Louisville's interested in him in baseball as well, uh, along, along with the University of Kentucky. So, you know, yeah. another, then I got Ty Bryant, who the same scenario that, so, you know, I, possibly looking at, you know, depending on what they choose to do, you know, four to five, you know, quality D1 baseball players. And so that's going to make for a fun year. And even more so than that, talking about great people. Uh, you know, uh, Coach, it's, they're all four-plus GPA kids. I mean, they, they, they make me look like a great coach. <laughs> hey, you are, Coach. Uh, we, we go back a long ways uh, over in Bryan Station. And, uh, yes, sir. And, yeah, so so we know we know what you've done over at Bryan Station. We know what uh, you continue, and you, and you just added another uh, great assistant coach that used to coach at Lexington Catholic to your team as well. Oh wow, what a what a pick Taylor. up with him! Yeah, yes. Um, I, be, growing up here, being from here, I gave me the luxury of having having the ability to find quality coaches. Uh, I lost this this year. I lost uh, Ben Eubank, who's been with me pretty much day one. Helped me build. Brian Station, come over, help me build Douglas. And then losing him, I was like, what am I going to do? Um, and sure enough, uh, Taylor uh, happens, whatever happened over there, it happens. And he's another kid like you, Banks, that I've been around his whole life. I gave him lessons. He played for me uh, as a young kid. So we talked several times on the phone and went back. And landing him was just like, I was like, well, perfect. At least somebody can help me play shoe bank. And then I ended up adding a, a I thought I was going to get Ryan Combs, who played for me at Bryan Station, Mr. Baseball. He ended up getting a job promotion, so then I turn around and lose him again. I'm like, God, now I need a pitching coach. So then I look up and get a guy named John Wilson, uh, who played for the at University of Kentucky, uh, played uh, professional baseball with the uh, Nationals Mets organization to help run the pitching. So I get him, and so it's just been uh, great having having those two guys. Plus, you know, I got Steve Caldwell. Dorian Harrison, another great one. Uh, we've got another guy named uh, Aaron Wilson, uh, who, who helps to run the freshman. And then pick, uh, our, my last new was a, a young man, but a kid by the name of Tyler Plank. Um, you know, so to round out my staff. So I feel that obviously I'm going to be biased, but I feel we have the best staff around. You you had mentioned you know that uh, you you've got some speed obviously on your team again this year. Hayden Hunt was special last year to watch. I think we were at uh, Whitaker Bank Ballpark if I if I remember right. We were doing the Bryan Station game and, and the kids stole home. That was pretty cool. Oh what a what a great young man he is and I, I love Hayden and he knows I, I had the luxury of being with him since he was in seventh grade. Yeah, he started with me at Bryan Station and because of, he's in a Car G Woods program and. I was lucky enough to get the uh, job at station. He came over, and we we're going back and forth talking, and and we we're sitting. Here, he goes uh, three pitches before that. He goes, Coach, I'm still home. I'm going, yeah, but the hitter's got a one-two count. We're not, we're not going right now. Uh, he ends up working a walk, and uh, so Dan Key gets to two zero, and he sees me give a take, and I turn around. And he looks at me, and I smile. That was that was our only sign. I, I didn't tell him to go. He, he, we've already discussed it four pitches earlier. You know, I love to empower my kids. If they think they can do something, do it. Go do it. And, 
you know, he he worked hard getting his lead over there earlier. He goes, Coach, I can still home. Okay, I'll do it to you. So we did it. <laughs> and sure enough, it worked. And uh, and obviously people think I put it on. That was more him than me. And like I said, I give credit where credit's due. It's a young man who paid attention to the game and, and letting these kids be empowered to make decisions. And he made one, so I, I let him run with it. Obviously, at no point does that make sense to steal home with a 2-0 count and bases loaded, but why not? <laughs> I, I think we actually have that clip, Coach, if uh, you don't mind. I want to I wanna show that. I think we got a couple different angles on it as well, if I remember oh. right. So we got we got the oh, angle yeah. that's looking over at, uh, at, you know, at third base. And then mm -hmm. I think we've got the – I know we got the one behind home. Maybe center field, too. Oh, let's, yeah. let's take a look at it if you don't care, Coach. Sure. Oh, outstanding. Uh, all right, this is Hayden Hunt's uh, stolen, stealing home plate. Gary and I were talking about how good uh, the baseball is here in the uh -oh. area, but, man, it is in the 11th uh -oh, region. Home. Steal of home and Hunt will score. Rice went to the third base up and there. Hunt took off. Yeah. And he almost beat the ball to the – Oh, we got the third base yeah. angle too. Gary and I were talking about how oh, good yeah. – Baseball is here in oh. the, the Lexington area. There he is, Man, walking, is walking, walking. Oh, steal, steal of home and Hunt will score. What a jump. <laughs> yeah. Rice that, went to the windup and it's Hunt took it. That, that, that was amazing. He, like I said, he was a fun kid to coach, and obviously losing him and his leadership is, is huge for us. Um, and hopefully the young guys will, will pick up. But, you know, it's hard to replace somebody as him and – and a specialist him. And, he, and what I love about it, he was home in Christmas break. Uh, he was over there working out with us at high school again. And that's my thing is once you play for me, you're always welcome where I'm at. And having those type of kids come back around for the young kids and going, hey, uh, Coach Brook was right. This college isn't as easy as, as we think it is. We're going to do this, this, and this. So that's great hearing from those kids to tell these high school kids that uh, they do a lot of things. And it's not what we think it is. So it, and I love having those guys and be successful. And uh, he's gotten to play quite a bit, and which, you know, there's another, you know, all of college got cut season. He was getting to play quite a bit as a freshman. Yeah. And I'm so proud of him. And uh, our other seniors playing college has started, just started pitching. I posted some uh, videos on him. He's a Juco up in North, across the North Carolina, uh, Jaden Brown. And what a, what a great kid he was as well. And, those two kids helped me turn, get this program to where it's at today. And obviously, Michael Lowe, I can't say much about him. I mean, Lord, I'm, what, what a great young man. He's at Louisville uh, playing football and got a chance next year to get a little bit of uh, playing time. I've talked to him several times over the offseason and just another special quality person. And I go on and on and on. But, you know, those kids coming back around with our young kids to the fact that how young we still are, but like I tell my kids all the day, yes, we are young, but we're still we're older than everybody else because uh, you've all played varsity. Some of these kids are, that are juniors or seniors, they're going to be playing varsity for the first time. I said, you guys are two year starters, so you're older than them. Yeah, I saw. Uh, that's how we, go ahead. I saw you. I saw you had uh, uh, the kid that played at Tate's Creek. He came over and and practiced with you guys, I believe, there early. You know, this season, um, uh, Milwaukee Brewers. Now, help me out, coach. Oh, yeah, that's uh, uh, Devin Harrison. Devin Harrison, yeah. Yeah, Devin Harrison. Yeah. I was thinking Shelby there for a second, but then I was like, no, yeah. Harrison came well, out for Shelby. So. Yeah, uh, his brother, uh, Dorian Harrison, is one of our coaches. Okay. So he called me. Goes, uh, he goes, Dor he goes uh, Devin's got to leave for spring training. Can he come over and work? I'm like, what kind of question is that? Yes. Uh, so he showed up. I uh, got a bunch of ground balls and hit. And, you know, those kids – they, I love them to see people like that. That's who they want to be. And as many people as I can get around, around for them to see, talk to, interact with, the better understanding they have of what it takes to get to where those guys are. And ultimately, that's where we all do. He, he played major college baseball. You know, he was drafted. He's trying to make his way up through the system. You know, he could tell these kids that, hey, this is what it takes, fellas. And because obviously them hearing it from me daily, they get tired of. Somebody like that. It, it oh, he that's what he's doing. Well, the coach just said that the other day. Well, we might be knowing what we're talking about. <laughs> so it just helps reinforce us. And I always welcome those type of players back around. And you know him, Hayden, uh, come back, J JB. Um, 
you know, just all, all of them in general, anybody and everybody's welcome where we're at. And that just helps our kids. Uh, to me, it's more beneficial for, for, for me, for, for our kids than it is for them. Obviously they're getting their work at, but uh, our kids sitting there watching him taking the infield and ground balls and how he does it. And then I turn around and he's sitting there working with them. He's, I see him working with Ty Bryant and, and Julius on how to how to handle things and talk to our third baseman about getting the glove out. Uh, so now, now it's more meaningful coming from somebody still playing versus uh, coaches. It, that's how kids are work today. So the more quality people I can get around, the better that better a team I'm going to have. Well, and you you can totally relate that uh, to that as well because you did the same thing when you when you were their age, right? Because I mean, you you yeah. played obviously at Lafayette. You uh, went on to University of Kentucky and then got drafted as well, Coach. Can yes, you talk, uh, and, talk and, about that? Uh, yeah, like I said, I, I was lucky enough. I played at Lafayette High School on some great teams. Uh, played at University of Kentucky. Um, when I, we got come back and work out with Lafayette at Christmas break and with, with that high school team and uh, gotten drafted and I'd come back and I, uh, by that point in time, I wasn't going to Lafayette as much because the coach I played for was at Bryan Station, which is Steve Chandler. So I'd go over there to work out because that's my coach. Right. And he allowed me to come over there. So I got to be around those kids and got to know those and work with them. And it, it, it's, and they, they get just as much out of it as I do. I'm still getting my work in, but you know, and that, and that's how Chandler was with our group and our kids, and that's probably where I, you know, learned it from is, is he had an open door policy, which is the exact same thing that I that I tried to have with my program and my kids. Wherever I'm at, you're you're more than welcome. Uh, you know, I, we were working out this year, and I had a kid named Tyler Hawkins show up and work with it, who's at the plays at the University of Louisville. I coached him uh, at, at Bryan Station, but he came to our workout at Christmas break because he I, I play he played for me. He asked me, "Yes, come on, open door policy." Another great kid. Now I got another, another, another great young player who's in college around our kids. So it just, it just helps build uh, a bond and everything, and community and all that stuff with them. And it's just great. Same thing as you know, some of the other programs do with their their players. And it's, it's that's I think what separates Lexington baseball from a lot of other places is that we had all of us have a tremendous group of young men coming back. And involved and around these kids and helping them daily uh, when they're home in the off season, and yeah. or home for college, and it it works out great. Your uh, your team last year, coach, uh, looks like you finished the season nine and twenty two overall. But again, you you're talking about the youngness of the team, and uh, certainly you look like a, a rock star team when we saw you up there at Whitaker Bank Ballpark uh, against Bryan State. You guys took it to another level that night. Well, you know, the, the kids are special. And, and like I said, our first year, we went 9 and 22. Uh, it was a learning curve. Last year, we were 19 and 17. Mm -hmm. And they, they, grew, they grew up a lot. And we, have, we had moments to where we, we shine and play. But then we had moments to where we, we were freshmen. And for the most part, uh, you know, last year's team, you had a freshman first baseman for, um, uh, or an eighth grader, depending on how you played it. You had an eighth grade catcher. You had – Eighth grade pitchers, freshman pitchers, you had a freshman second baseman, a freshman right fielder. So it, I was predominantly dominated by, by youth, and they got their second year in. And then last, after this year, what I was looking for is now I'm going to be a lot of sophomores and juniors, uh, you know, line up with, with, with some seniors. So, but more so than that, is there going to be, this will be some of these kids' third year starting varsity. Mm hmm. You're not your typical, in my opinion, sophomore if you started three years now. And that, that's what I kept telling them is that, yes, you are a sophomore, but you're a three-year starter. You're a senior. Play like one. Act like one. And, uh, you know, kid like a Cameron Dunn, uh, you know, obviously Julius. Ty, what, what a year he had, ready, ready to step it off. You know, Dane Key, Kate Johnson. Uh, you know, Zatis Kennedy. Uh, uh, there, there's a, you know Thomas Howard, Gavin Faulkner. I go on and on, and, and you know we, we I think we were set to have a run to do something special if we could play at the and maintain what I thought the capability that they they can all year. But there again, we're also talking about 14, 15 year old kids. There's no telling what's going to happen when they get to school the next day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you're talking about the bats being high last year for you as well, Coach. Uh, you know Hayden Hunt batted 402. 376 for Julius Sears. Uh, mm -hmm. Ty, Ty Bryant, uh, looks like he had 357 and then 302 for Michael Lowe as well. So that's a pretty good batch right there, Coach. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, you, you lost Hayden in that group. You lost Micah. Yeah. But I lost two great senior leaders. I mean, Hayden was a valedictorian of Carter G. Uh, Micah was right there behind him, another four point post. Uh, so with those two, not only did I lose the offense, I lost the leadership that they provided. Uh, you know, and having two seniors, so with one of them, uh, hadn't played in three years, which was uh, Josh McClure, and I was really excited to see what he can do. Mm-hmm. He looked really great in our first two scrimmage games. Uh, and then you had Noah, uh, who, who, who played well, pitched well last year as a PO. But like I said, uh, you know, Hayden and Micah has been the leaders, so that's going to be hard to replace. So it's going to be who is going to step up to take those two guys' spots. And that would be determination of what kind of year we had. And like I tell, uh, and one of my sayings that I tell all teams that I've ever coached is I said, what separates uh, great teams from good teams is great teams, I, you can tell, you can name their leader. They go, what? So I name a sport, uh, you know, hot, you know, basketball and name, name a team and they can tell me, oh, oh, this person or this person or this person. So, and I'm like, well, look at the records. There's a reason why that they did what they did. When it's that obvious where we can name their leader and their their, what I call their, their, their soul of the team is why that team does what they did, you know, and, and I, I, that, that goes with unprecedented. I, I don't think a lot of people put a lot of thought into how that works and it, it does. Mm-hmm. Uh, looks like uh, Chris Heiler is watching out there tonight. And uh, I'm just looking here on, on some of the comments coming through on Facebook. By the way, if you fans want to interact with coach Eddie Brooks of the Frederick Douglass Broncos, and myself, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Andrew Carlson and Chris Heiler tuning in right now. Um, Chris Heiler says, Chris. good hearing you guys talk about baseball and even better having you guys as great friends. You know, Chris Heiler, he, he's over there at Bumblebee Team Sports, uh, Coach. Um, and uh, I think yes. actually your shirt and possibly, you know, I, I know our gear yeah. that we're wearing is from him. And our gear, all of our gear comes from him too. He, he takes care of us. Uh, you know, uh, Hyler uh, does does amazing job. We, now we'll go round and round sometimes. Uh, I don't get the quite the look that I want. I, I may be a headache for him sometimes, but he always comes through. And I want, but, you know, the unique thing about you know he and I is is you know yes he supplies his stuff, but we've been friends for many many years. His his older brother played for my dad. Uh, his dad John, what a great individual just to speak volumes of him. Everybody knows that his dad's, you know, Mr. Brian Station and he thinks enough of me. He showed up last year when we were playing Brian Station at our park our first year and won neutral colors. You know, he's Mr. He's on, he's on their, 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 their association, alumni association, but yeah. you know, he think, you know, they think enough of me and my family that he just showed up as in UK stuff. He wouldn't show up in Brian Station or, or Douglas stuff. And that just speaks volume to, to, to the, to the character of that family and and to Chris and the job his dad did raising him. You, you uh, talk about so it's, you, you talk about Brian Station again, Coach. Uh, you get you guys made that field over there look so daggone good that they never did, you know, tear it down and redo it. I mean, everything else over at Brian Station's campus has been redone except for that baseball field. You guys did an excellent it, job it, with the upkeep. Well, well thank you. I, we like everything else is, and not just me, but all of our coaches. We put a lot of heart and soul in our fields. We want the best for our kids. We want yeah. them to have the best opportunity. And it starts with the field. And uh, like I tell everybody, look good, feel good, play good. Well, part of looking good is showing up and knowing that your the, your yard looks the best. So you're gonna your, your chest is gonna be a little popper. Okay, if my uniform looks good. Okay, now I'm gonna be a little taller. Okay, now everything's crisp and clean. Now all of a sudden I went from five five. Now I'm six four. Now I feel really good. <laughs> and then you go play the game, and that's just kind of how my philosophy is, and and I, I preach that in and I, and Chris will obviously will test it if he's still watching. Is I put a lot of time designing stuff for our kids and how we look and hats and shirts and and uh, uniforms. So I want them to be different. I want I want to be a unique uh, trendsetter, so to speak, in that in that avenue. And, and I've tried to carry that same principle over to Douglas and. So much so that Coach Ransom, our basketball coach, is uh, the last three uniforms. They're all the uniforms I designed now. He's turned he's turned the designing over to me uh, for, his, for his girls team, which is funny, uh, which is another great person. I love Coach Ransom. Travis McConaughey, uh, he, he was talking about the West Jessman team too. He said, you're right, I was part of that team. But uh, I, I wanted to uh, mention 
here that he he's the new head coach over at Frankfurt. You know him pretty well, don't you, Coach? Yeah, he took lessons from me as well, and uh, no coach Conathy, and and what a great hire that they had down there at, uh, at Frankfurt. He's a qual another quality individual, great baseball mind. Played at West Jessamine, uh, you know, and he was a uh, bounced around a little bit. He was an assistant coach when Jody left. He Went ended up uh, getting for a while. job. Went to East, yes, and then I'm getting the head job at at Frankfurt, and uh, and he's done. He's done some great things there with them already. Gotten them playing a different style of baseball, and 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 that's fun. And that's what ultimately that's what we we all want to do, and and that's just another quality individual who who's in charge of kids and who's somebody you, you like to in charge of kids. Uh, Chris Chris has mentioned again. By the way, I want to send a shout out to uh, Andrew Carlson and his wife watching here tonight as well. Uh, he'll he'll like this. Is we call this the BGO Studio, the Bluegrass Orthopedic Studio here, because uh, he he put he put a lot of sponsorship in this in this uh, corner that we have here that uh, we we call the BGO Studios that uh, that we're able to do this technology with Coach. So uh, I want to give That's a definitely awesome. a shout out with them. Thank you so much, man. Yes, appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, Chris Chris said uh, you and him could have a clinic on uniforms. He said you guys could go way back on that. He said he said and, and those hats are pretty amazing too. But he said look out for the new jerseys this year. What's up with the new jerseys, Coach? I have no idea. Um, <laughs> maybe maybe he's talking about last year's jerseys. Maybe. Yeah, because I, I didn't uh, I didn't do no new jerseys this year. Uh, <laughs> all I got did was be uh, new this year. Is uh, the one hat that everybody I posted that literally as soon as I put it up for sale sold out within an hour was which is my black hat. Um, I saw that. this is the one I got on. The one I got on is what I call our traditional hat that I I don't want to change. That to me is what I I want the uh, the staple to be at that school uh, long after I come is as this is traditional. The other ones I kind of tinker around a little bit, um, and I, you know I got the black hat and then of course I got a, a gray hat as well but uh, I, no i didn't do no new unis this year he's been on me about next year and i um i said well we'll worry we'll, we'll about next year when we get to you i tell you what um, really stands out about the shirt is the home plate behind the behind the big d there that uh, that really makes the shirt pop well yeah that's uh actually the logo that i went with was our, what to me is our stationary custom logo um when i got the job uh, three years ago i uh sent a message to uh uh, Principal Diaz and asked him because uh, our logo was an orange D and I said can I make it more like a Miami he goes what do you mean I said two-tone the D he goes huh so I I did the two-tone as you can see the the the, uh, the those two yeah and he goes he goes all right I'm good with that so then I, I, I told Tyler I said to make it a uniform for baseball I to put over a plate so the first one he sent me was inside of it I'm like no I want it big over top of the plate and so ever since then between he and I, this is pretty much our, our standard logo, baseball logo we run with. And the unique, funny thing about it is it's kind of caught on across the board for all of our sports because basketball does the basketball with the D over top of it. Uh, you know, golf's done the same thing with the D over. So it slowly became the the accepted trademark for all of our sports uh, is a two-tone D over top of whatever image is that they play. And it's fun. And I, I love it. And we we set we we'll sit around all the time and um, you know I do know that he and I's got something coming uh, for our kids if we ever get back together down the line here shortly with some uh, shirts and that that might be what he's be talking about save uniforms I do have some uh, shirts coming yeah for maybe, our kids so. yeah he, he said the hats were maybe that's what he's talking about is the hats as I'm looking here we had a couple different somebody said they had your classic baseball card were you on were you on the classic oh, yeah. baseball card. Yes, I had one when I was with uh, Lynchburg Hillcats. Uh, nice. Funny story about that is uh, when the lady was there doing doing the pictures when she took it, we were we we're uh, it's our, where I'm in a gray uniform. I can actually tell you because it was funny. We're playing at Wilmington uh, uh, Blue Rocks up in Wilmington, Delaware, uh -huh. and uh, the Somerset head coach, which uh, obviously you know a lot of people don't, which is Phil Grundy. He also me and him were playing together in summer time so uh we was up there playing them and uh, i forgot a guy by the name of glendon rush who pitched in the big leagues i uh, was pitching that game so i end up hitting up hitting that, that swing she comes back and i get back after the game and tells me that uh, she took the picture of that swing is when i hit a home run off of him oh, wow. uh, so I, actually that swing was a home run swing from according to what she told me <laughs> 
I'd, I'd love to see that uh, if, if that guy's still watching there, if he can share that with us. That'd be awesome. Just take a picture of it and send to us. Coach, do you have a? You don't have a picture of it, do you? Uh, I do up in. I have my cards are up in my room. Uh, okay. I wish I'd have to. Well, maybe next uh, time we have here, you. No, sure, ne definitely. Next time we have you on, we'll definitely show that. Definitely. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's that's awesome. I, I'd always I, like I've met some people that you know through working with the Lexington Legends that have taken the photos of the guys mm -hmm. out there. Um, I always tell people, Coach, by the way, and I, I always tell them, I was like, you know, I've spent five years in the minor leagues, but it's been behind the production, you know. So yeah, <laughs> so that's that's always a good story to lead into. Sometimes, you know, you, you know, and first of all, I want to thank you, uh, you know. Uh, Warfield for the stuff that you do and, and for for Central Kentucky and all sports, basketball, football, baseball, volleyball, you and Gary Ball. And, and I can't thank you guys enough for the quality you guys are doing and putting the stuff out here because uh, the kids, they just love it. It, it means a lot to them and, and it, it's good for them to see it and get their recognition. Uh, and, and I want to thank uh, obviously you because you're, you're the brains behind everything. And I want to thank you for all the time, effort, energy, that you do doing this and well, I appreciate uh, and that. I truly really know that. Thank you so much. Well, I appreciate that. I always see you whenever whenever I'm on campus over there at Douglas, and I saw it at Bryan Station too. But but you're sure. you're a total supporter of all sports. I see you know if the girls are playing softball, you're over there you know around the softball field, or especially at football. You know I see you all the time at football over there, and uh, uh, you and I go back and forth sometimes. I say, hey coach, we're going to broadcast a game this season. I think I told you that for. Uh, for the first year anyway, and then we finally got into to last year and we finally got a game on. But, um, you know, base, baseball is hard to do whenever you're doing it at the high school because – and I'm talking about broadcast with a video um, because most of the backstops, you know, they're, they're just right there up on the press box a lot of times. There's two mm -hmm. fields. There's two fields right now where we can actually make that happen and make it look really good, and that's your field that you're playing at now. And then there's also Lexington Christian Academy's field, which is totally set up for TV, in my opinion, because of the way that it's set up over there. Uh, we could definitely do a multi-camera type of uh, broadcast there. But but your field, I think we could pull it off, too, because we could use, you know, put a camera up high on the uh, football press box or something as well. Oh, yes. It, and and obviously when they built ours, they thought of that it's, of course, unlike the rest of them, we're, full, we're fully uh, – um, a Wi-Fi out there as well. Yeah. So I mean, you, you can jump off everything there, and I think our our press box is back enough, and you can put it up on top, to we get a good view, and then you, you know, put the one on our football how it overlooks down for a different camera angle. So uh, I think we could do you can do some great things there uh, from camps from camera angles, and it would be fun. Love to have. Obviously, you guys. I think we talked about. Can't remember if it was with you I was talking to or, or Gary Ball about possibly doing some type of uh, tournament on a weekend and getting somebody involved in having to, uh, you know, try to get four team, three other teams from a, yeah. uh, all parts of the state to come in and do like a, you know, a prep spin uh, tournament kind of, uh, kind of deal. Fantastic. Cause I, I feel confident we get maybe one of the best teams out of the Western Eastern part of the state, obviously us and, you know, the Northern part and all of us come together and play. I think it would be a great little weekend. Uh, and kind of do like the, you know, like you ever watch the CBS Sports Classic on TV? You know, I know they we're talking about basketball there, but uh, where they have, you know, obviously in baseball, you're going to try to do three teams so you play three games if you can. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, they, they always have, what is it, UCLA, Ohio State, Kentucky, and North Carolina, and they always alternate, right? So what if, right. what if we could do that with baseball, but maybe have the Prep Spin Baseball Classic and – and do something cool with that. Oh, I think that'd be fantastic. And that's what we're, we're talking about. Uh, you know, and, and, uh, and I think it'd be fantastic. Uh, that would be, uh, cause we do the, uh, and it'd be hard for you guys to do all over the place. Cause we have the Fayette County Invitational Tournament, which is a great tournament every year. But if we can do the, uh, a prep spin, when I can set up a set part of weekend, we can go into, cause we typically do our schedule started in June, July. You know, we can, you and I can get together and say, hey, we want to do it this weekend. And, you know, I can start reaching out to, you know, who I, who are going to be some of the better teams in the, in the state and try to get them in there for that weekend. So, look, all the games are going to be streamed live. Uh, you know, bring your stuff in, kind of make it a big deal. Uh, I think it, it would go over. Yeah, yeah I think so. then you, 
every team will get two games on TV because we'll play two games on Friday night, and you would and every team every team would play uh, two games on Saturday. So each team would play uh, three times. Yeah, that would, that would be awesome. I'm I'm definitely down for it. We just got to figure out what it's going to take to put it on, and and you know just just work out all the details with you on that. Uh, oh, definitely. Yes, we, we'll get together here soon whenever you have time, and we'll sit yeah. down and come up with the game plan. I tell I keep telling my, my friends over there at Mingi, which is our title sponsor on the network, is like, man, if if you guys had something we could do with baseball, Mingi beef jerky and baseball, I think that would go uh, just amazingly well. I, I see the uh, the guys at, at the Legends for the past two years, uh, they're not, you know those, I, and I don't want to promote dip at all, but you know the dip cans, but they're, now they're putting beef jerky in the dip cans, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it mm -hmm. looks like, you yeah, know, oh, so, exactly. it, so it makes the baseball players, I guess, you know, who are, who are used to doing dip an alternative to it that's healthy, you know, that's more healthy, you know, that, uh, that they can do. So I, I thought that was uh, cool if Mingy could just do something like that. That'd be awesome. Oh, uh, Oh, exactly. That, w that would be, and uh, obviously, because I know they they did the game we did out at uh, Legends Field. They pitched in and did shirts. They're a title sponsor with that, and yeah. and I mean, first of all, uh, you know, I know they do a lot of stuff with you guys, but without them, you're not airing as much as you are for the local sports. And, exactly. And you need, I mean, uh, the people there, and if you don't buy mini beef jerky, please go buy it because it's first of all, it's amazing. Uh, my brother-in-law, who lives in Florida, uh, we always got to take him a whole bunch down when we go because uh, he loves it so much. Oh yes, and, <laughs> and we need more and more quality people like 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 that family to support uh, local high school athletics. But but you know he, he's able he, he gives us the means or you guys the means to do a lot of things for for the, the kids here in in Central Kentucky. You know, and what a what a blessing that is for for all of us as well. Well, you know, you know, we, we started doing this thing where, you know, if you win, win a game that's broadcasted on the network, you get a bag of Mingy beef jerky. We started that up. So for the coaches, oh. you know, so so that's okay. an incentive to go out there and win. But uh, also for the guests that are on the show, for the coaches that are guests on the show, gets a free bag of Mingy. So we owe you a bag, Coach. Oh, outstanding. Thank you. Mild. I, I love the mild. That's my favorite. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I know I, it seems a bit like the basketball coaches. They they seem to like the sweet and hot. Uh, that seems to be the you know the number one amongst them. But I, I got a feeling more baseball coaches are like the mile. Oh uh, yes, most definitely. We're we're to miles is is what I call your traditional, and we're all baseball guys. We're all traditional people. <laughs> uh, I'm sure most of them and like me is. I, I get dressed the same way every day for game. Still, it's it's we, we are we are creatures of habit. So I say most of us baseball coaches will will lean toward the mile, the traditional style. Let me ask you this: I, I do want to hit on you know what what the region is going to be like in baseball. Should we get to play it, and hopefully we will get to play it, coach. But uh, um, when you were growing up, has baseball kind of been all you know part of your life the whole time? Like starting out, maybe uh, you know passing with dad or whatever, and then maybe uh, collecting baseball cards that kept you in it, you know? Well, uh, my dad was a uh, coach forever. He coached uh, local sports, coached uh, youth football for 20 plus years, uh, coached basketball. Uh, but then in the summer, he coached uh, uh, major softball, uh, which is uh, back then those guys got paid lots of money and they traveled all around the United States playing. Uh, they were sponsored by a Louisville Slugger. Um, they actually won the super division. So with doing that, I, he wasn't, he didn't coach me as, as a youth. So I, I did not play, uh, baseball until I was age of nine years old. He didn't let me play uh, ball, did not let me play coach pitch. So, but with that said, I went with his softball team and play and, and traveled with them in the summer. Well, now I'm around a guy by the name of Doug Flynn. Uh, you know, who, yeah. who was on a big red machine, gold glove winner. So that's who I get to play catch with. Uh, another guy on their team was the name of Gerald Belcher, who was an All-American at, uh, at Kentucky baseball. Uh, I play, their third, ba third base was a guy named Rodney Woods, who was big-time coach down in Wayne County, uh, who played baseball at the University of Tennessee. So I ended up uh, – then another another gentleman I got to uh, hang around with a lot is a guy named uh, – he passed away, which is Bill Pinkham, who played – with Cincinnati Reds. Uh, wow. His actual son now is at Louisville, uh, Pinkham. That's his uh, last son he had playing. 
But so being around those guys, I was able to learn a lot and it, I was blessed beyond uh, most, most of your normal kids. Uh, so that's, that's where the passion for baseball comes with, with those gentlemen. But, you know, like our, everybody else here, you know, from age of seven years old, you know, till 15, I played during football season, I was a football player. Basketball season, I was a basketball player. Football season, I, or baseball season, I was a baseball player. And, and I love, that's why I think we get along great at Douglas because I have so many two sport athletes, yeah. you know, with Julius and a bunch of the football kids is, I want to be kids. Go, go enjoy it. Cause I don't know what you're going to be when you're 18 years old. You know, don't, don't sell, sell out for one sport. Go, go be a, you know, do multiple things, you know? Uh, so it works out great. And I actually gave up all of them uh, my sophomore year before I, cause I'm old uh, at the age I was, we didn't hit high school until we were a sophomore because mm-hmm. we went to junior high, which was seventh, eighth and ninth. So when I hit high school, is when I gave up that summer. I gave up all sports except uh, baseball, but it also had something to do with I was I was five foot seven. Okay. Uh, yeah. I was tiny. I enrolled at Lafayette at six two. That's how much I grew that summer. That's amazing. Uh, so, yeah, it it, it it made it painful on my parents that summer growing because I couldn't every week and a half they were buy me new shoes, you know, and pants <laughs> and shit and shirts. So it, it made for a miserable summer. I'd say you probably ate them out of. I I say you probably ate them out of what the. You know, I always tell my son because he's on a growing spurt right now. I was like, man, you're gonna eat me out of house and home because you're eating so daggone much. Uh, Yes. (laughs) Uh, I'm sure uh, that. Yeah. So they they loved it, and but and then like I said, so I got to Lafayette, and I was blessed to be around. You know, Steve Chandler, who's in the Hall of Fame. I was in the middle of one of the uh, three states that we won there, and a my coach coach was there seven years. Mm-hmm. You know, he won three state titles in seven years at Lafayette. And mm-hmm. I was in the middle of that run with, with those great players. And and a kind of funny story is a guy named Rod Smith uh, was my teammate there. He was a freshman when I was a senior at Lafayette. So I said, everybody that you played with here and everybody that I got to play with, with he and I being the common denominator, sat down one day and started writing down a list of all these kids. Between he and I, we came up. With I think it was fifty-seven Division One baseball players and three first rounders. With he and I being a common denominator that came out of Lafayette. That's amazing. And, and that went from the uh, it's like the 80, eighty-seven. It, 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 the time frame was eighty-seven Lafayette, all the way to uh, be freshman four, be the two thousand eight. You ever, you ever heard that book, Seven Seven Degrees of Kevin Bacon? Maybe we should do one, Seven Degrees of Eddie Brooks. <laughs> yeah, connect connect all the dots there, Coach. It, it was, and and me and him talk about it all the time. And, you know, the first round, I was the first round of the Yankees. Of course, everybody knows Kearns. Because uh, Kearns is on that team as a seventh grader when Rod was a senior. And then the other one, uh, first rounder was Chaz Rowe, who's still pitching. Um, you know, because there, to, and like I said, it was it was crazy the the amount of talent that rolled, and that's just it was just that hot, hot that period during that time, and now it's which you know Tate Creek was uh, was rolling right now, and what a job Coach Pointer's done over there, and uh, you know it kind of runs in cycles, and mm-hmm. and I'm hoping it's our cycle now <laughs> at Douglas. Yeah. Absolutely. We got uh, Jordan Terrence watching. Curtis Ward says, uh, Eddie and William, two great ambassadors of high school sports here in Central Kentucky. We appreciate that, Curtis. Uh, yes, definitely definitely love all the feedback there. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of folks, uh, you know, have, have looked up to you, Coach, that uh, are commenting and, and sending us messages. My phone's going crazy over here, by the way, text messages and things. But uh, a, uh, lot of, a lot of folks tuning in to, to watch you, Coach. Uh, you got to well, th- thank them, and you got a great one on there right now, Coach Torrance. And I've told this story many times, and I'm sure Coach Torrance could elaborate on it one day. Is probably one of the greatest games, uh, two of the greatest games I ever coached in was he and I coached, and it was uh, Walker Bueller and Ryan Combs to- uh, towed off uh, oh, for wow. a district game. The game started, and it was over 47 minutes later. We completed a complete high school baseball game in 47 minutes. You had two we great pitchers going to. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think it was a combined 36 or 37 strikeouts. Uh, Coach Torrance could help me out there, remember. But I remember looking at you back. I was like, I literally walk out, then walk back to the dugout, then we'd walk right back. I'm like, 47 minute game. I'm like, this is awesome. I, <laughs> and just, you know, watching Bueller and Combs uh, go toe to toe and, uh, I mean, they didn't hit our kid, and obviously we didn't hit him. <laughs> wow. So it made for a, a, a fast night, and it was fun. It was a fun game. And, uh, of course, the other one was the uh, the regional one with uh, actually Coach Taylor, who's with me now, Taylor Brooks. Uh, when Combs uh, beat, uh, beat them, they won a state 2-1 to one, uh, in 2012. And that was uh, another great game because they got both hits off Combs in the first inning. And he didn't give up another hit the next uh, six innings, which is amazing. Yeah, but that was some good good games and great times. And there was a bunch of great players in the process. But I always remember that game between uh, Torrance and I. And we, we pretty much would walk past the phone, hey, hey, good to see you. Walk past, hey, good, hey, fast thing. Yeah, I'll be back here in a second. That's all we do is just crisscross and saying hi to each other. So, uh, it, and the kids played and it was a fun game. And I want to say there's something like 15 to 25 scouts there as well. Uh, so it, it, it made an electric night uh, for oh, baseball instead of Kentucky. Man, that's one of those games where you wish you would have, you know, for us, you know, we we love content, obviously, but, but to have that game recorded oh. or streamed at that time, man, that would have been amazing. Oh, it, it would have been. Like, like I said, I think there was 15 to 20 scouts, um, you know, obviously uh, Combs and, and Bueller both because they weren't there for nobody else. Uh, the you know, and, and what a game. And it was a fast pace. It was literally 47 minutes. And if we, I think it took us longer to stretch, take infield, and did the baseball game. <laughs> Both teams. 47 and, minutes. Is that, is that the fastest game you think you've ever played? Oh, hands down, the fastest game I've ever played. Yeah. Um, you know, because, like, well, there wasn't no, neither no, there were no errors made because neither team hit the pitcher. So it was literally, it was literally a pit, pitcher and catcher game. And I think we had two hits. They had one, and their hit came from Bueller, and I think one of our twos came from Combs. So it was literally those two button heads, <laughs> and the rest of us were along for the ride. Walker yeah, Walk reminds me so much of uh, you know a former Dodger. You know, I always say that he's he's like Oral Hershiser to me because he, he's just got that you know that that mm -hmm. persona about him. I guess you know the way he plays the game. What's your thoughts on that? Oh, uh, that's a, that's a very very comparison. Uh, you know, they called him the Bulldog, but, you know, and Herzog was phenomenal in our day, and I remember him, but, and, and that's a great comparison because obviously, how can you argue with that? But I think he has potential to have even having a bigger career because his stuff is so electric. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, he's 95 to 100, you know, curveballs. I mean, and what a great young man. And obviously, I don't know him nowhere near as good as Torrance does, but, but just what little I've been around him, he just seems like a quality, quality young man. And I think he's the type of one, if he stays healthy, that could, uh, you and I could be watching for 20 years from now, you know, 18 years from now, we'll still be talking about him. Yeah. And I'll still tell the story that I play, uh, coached against him in a 47 minute ball game. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Curtis uh, Ward says that uh, you're, you're famous for one liners. What's that about coach? I have no idea. I guess, um, <laughs> Every once in a while, um, in, in a game or whatever, I'll say something crazy, like, like a little quick. I, I know one of my favorite ones that I tell, I tell my kids all the time, and one of my pet peeves is they'll take a strike and look down at me at third base coach talks and nod their head. I know it's a strike. Swing the bat. You know, <laughs> I tell them, your parents don't pay $400 for it to sit on your shoulder. You, you know, you know stuff like that, I guess, yeah. is what he's referring to, is I'll constantly I'll have something crazy like that to say to the kids. And, and I'm blessed. I got some great kids who, who take my humor, uh, and 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 that's part of part of coaching is having that line of, of being able to joke with them, them joking with you, and when you need to get serious, they know it's time to get serious. And yeah, and I've been blessed um, with with being able to do that with those kid with the kids that I've coached, and and lucky enough, I've had a bunch of them coach for me, and now I got a bunch of former. Player slash coaches of mine coaching other sports. Uh, I know Coach Corn's got, you know, three of three of his staff is guys that coach uh, either played for me or coached with me. You know, and uh, uh, Tyler Cox, I mean uh, Matt Cox, 
Justin Miley, Alex Shapiro. Miley played for me. Shat played for me, coached with me. Um, Matt Cox played for me. You know, so there's, it's just been a blessing that I've had in, in my baseball coaching career uh, and, and teaching career, being around great young men who's made me better and who still call me and talk to me every once in a while and ask for my advice. And, and that's, that's, that's a blessing. And, 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 and of course, unlike anybody else, I have, and I have someone to call myself because I'll pick up phone and call my dad all the time. Uh, so I'm lucky to be blessed to call you know, Tommy Brooks, who most everybody knows, I think, around as far as uh, youth sports go to, to be able to call to ask questions. And um, so I, I have that fallback. So they use me, I, I, I call, I call pops. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> blessed with that, that avenue. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, we want to touch on, uh, we want to, and somebody said Rodney Woods, by the way, he's, he's, you know, talked about him in baseball. Well, he's also a heck of a high school basketball coach is what they're saying. Oh yes. One of the all time leading us wins as far as, uh, coaches. Mm-hmm. That's, yes, that's he was. Awesome. I, I said at Wayne County, he, he took him to the Sweet 16 several times down there, and I think he's the athletic director at Wayne County now. Yes, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, uh, his nickname was Thuzi, is what I knew him by. <laughs> but just another fine, fine, fine person, and that's just some of the people I've been blessed to be around in my life. That's awesome. That is awesome. All right, so the 11th region. All right, so I mean this this thing's always been kind of. You know, you, you talk about pitching. Pitching's always been important, but speed as well, Coach. So um, what's your thoughts on the 11th region? Should we get to play this season? What stands <sighs> out to you? Well, you know, it's 11th region is, like I've always said, is a nightmare. It's, uh, And I've always been saying this, and some people may hate it, and, and, and I, I feel confident in my statement is, you know, you'll have teams that will go, hey, we're, we're, they went 32-5. and five. Well, Come to Lexington, play our schedule. Yeah, uh, you, you know I'm not not by no means downgrading anybody's schedule. It's just it is that tough. It does not matter who you play; they're going to run somebody quality at you. And uh, you, you take for example, you know Tate Creek, who won the state last year, graduated I think nine or ten seniors. Mm-hmm. Well, they still can run. They're still going to run um, with Connor Lewis, their ace at you, who uh, you know 92, 93. Okay, uh, Madison Southern, who not a lot of people know about, they've got the guy going to uh, Tennessee, who's also you know 90, 90 93. Uh, You know, Coach Coach uh, Roof over there. I mean, no, no, don't need to say any more about him. He's one of the best ones that come. You know, Lafayette setting air with uh, uh, two, I believe, or three D one signees. Uh, uh, the shortstop uh, going to uh, Virginia Tech. Hallerman going to St. Xavier, and I think they had one other one. Then you got LCA. They got three, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got the Dryer kid, I believe, go, uh, committed to the UK. Uh, they got, I forgot the kid's last name, I still blank, and I apologize, young man, but he's uh, <laughs> South Alabama. You know, and you just go on down the list. You know, Coach Torrance has got uh, his shortstop uh, going to, um, to EKU, got a couple of them going to other schools with 10 more seniors. It doesn't matter. It's he graduated ten seniors. They we reload. Yeah. It, it's and and it's literally a nightmare day in day out. And I, you know, uh, if you go back and look, it's whatever team is the hottest at the end wins. Uh, you'll have teams that start out great, and then all of a sudden they'll they'll, they'll fil- filter out. I mean, I forgot Catholic. They've got a couple of guys and a new coach. Uh, I think they got the one kid committed to, committed to UK as well. You know, so I, the time we get to the postseason, it's just a normal game for our kids because, uh, you know, you play the Scott Counties, the Lafayettes, the Tate Creeks, the Henry Clays, uh, the LCAs day in, day out. That's just another big game. It's, uh, our kids are used to it as a whole. And what I mean us, I'm talking about the 11th region. Right. Uh, and it's just another another game. And – do you, do you like the back to back night schedules? You know where where for example, if you play Henry Clay, you play them. You know one at your home, and then you go the next day play them at their place. Well, actually, uh, we're the region that started doing that. Our district it was okay, and we got together a group of us, and we came up with the fact that because if you know if I've got quote unquote Sandy Koufax, and there's nobody else with him, and I know that 
you got the best team and I can throw him both times and beat you. So we did, we decided to go that route to get what we call the true best team. Okay. At that makes sense. Yeah. So I, we may, I may be able to beat you with Colfax, but then I got to throw Joe Johnson the second game and you beat me. So we split one, one. And then we have the built in tiebreaker set up. So I, when we did it, uh, then uh, 43rd followed suit with us. Then there's been a couple other districts that followed suit with us. So uh, I think we were, I, I love it. Uh, I think we we're onto something with that innovation to where, uh, you know, we're going to play at our park on Tuesday. We're going to your, your park on Wednesday. There ain't no, you know, so I can't hold, I can't hold nobody. So it's mano mano. Uh, obviously, a three game set would be the best, but. But in, in our setting, I think that's the best format, and, and I've loved it. I, I, if Coach Torrance is still on here, maybe he could speak on it in a, in a text. But I think it's been great for us uh, as, far, as far as the 42nd District. Yeah, I, I think it's a good idea, you know, now that you explain it that way because, you know, uh, it, it would make sense to me that if they were spread out, hey, I'd, I'd pitch Walker, Bull, you know, Bueller, you know, both times I play the best team, you know. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so, that's why we did it, just so we can truly get the best team, not the best team of that one pitcher. Yeah. You know, and that's – so we think we get a better uh, a better feel of, of our when our CDs come out at the end, as far as who's one, two, three, four, and five. Well, we think we got a pretty good feel of who how it fits um, because of how we do our scheduling. Now, there again, uh, there are five weeks with an off week is how we do it, so – you you got the team who ends up being, uh, you know, maybe be third or fourth, and then all of a sudden they catch hot, you know, late in the year, and then all of a sudden they they come out and win it. So, uh, you know, that's the other part of the equation. You get the true seating, but uh, you and I both know when a team gets catches on fire, it's hard to beat. Yes, sir. Well, coach, I, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but I've loved having this conversation here tonight with you. Uh, I've enjoyed. Like that, talk baseball and uh, get out in front of the uh, the Netflix and it's anytime, especially during this uh, this whole shutdown thing. I, I'd be love to be a guest. So uh, I'm just a text message, email away, and uh, any, you know any, any night, not a problem. I'd love to. I, hey, I'd love to have you on anytime, Coach. Uh, you know, it's always good talking to you and. You know, especially uh, you know, especially this week and in, in, in the times we are to have a little something positive to uh, to talk about, like you and I've done here tonight, talk about baseball, reminisce on baseball, and uh, um, you know, it's good to good to hear that out there. I think. Oh, it, it is, and and kids just you know things you know stay smart, stay safe. Uh, you know, obviously, keep working out, but do it in the right ways. You know, because the biggest thing for us to get back to. Uh, playing is the fact that we got to do our jobs of staying away yeah. to, to eliminate the virus. So, you know, don't get caught up with a bunch of groups and run around because that's how it spreads. So if we do our job as society, we can resume in, back in a couple of weeks. And I think, you know, the governor's killing it right now in our state ahead of things yeah. with the daily meetings at five and head of it. So if we follow what he's asking, I think by the 20th, we have a shot if to get back on the field, if we do, what he's asking without being mandated. You know, he's asking us to follow these guidelines. And if we get to the point to where we do it without being forced to, I think we can beat it and get to the, get to the end of the year for our, our seniors across the state to have a somewhat of a senior season. And then more importantly, in our sports I love and it's great and it's helped motivate, but they then they get their senior year of school back and they can walk. Yeah. Uh, you know, because right now you're looking at, you're talking about all the kids throughout the country ain't gonna have a chance to walk on their graduation. So we need to do our jobs and, and stay away from each other so that these kids can, can have what they, they need to have. It's their turn to have. And if we do that, I think we can set back and end up with a, uh, a partial season. You know, maybe we get six or seven games and play district and then postseason. And we could have a 20 game, you know, high school season if we do our job. Good words there, coach, good words. Well, uh, Coach Eddie Brooks, again, it's been uh, fun having you here tonight. Good catching up with you, and, and good luck. I, I do believe that we will play baseball this year. Hey, thank you so much, and uh, I'd love to have you out the farm to any pick of games. If we get rolling again, and have you out there and pick some good games uh, for you to do. And lo love to have you, and thank you for all that you do for uh, 
uh, for our, our uh, Central Kentucky sports. I appreciate that. Thank you, Coach. And I guarantee if we if we if we play baseball, if they say play ball, I'll be over there, Coach. Hey, outstanding. Looking forward to it. Thank you for having me on. Looking forward for the next time, will you? All right. See you, Coach. As uh, Coach Eddie Brooks there, uh, Coach Eddie Brooks of Frederick Douglass High School. Looking forward to big things for them this year once we get it uh, underway. And, uh, again, Coach Eddie Brooks and uh, Frederick Douglass High School joining us here tonight. This is the uh, first episode that we've had since the uh, – well, since actually last season, to be honest with you. So, uh, Coach Eddie Brooks, pioneer for the 2020 season. And we'll start uh, – we'll continue to have guests throughout the week. Uh, we'll let you guys know who that's going to be. Just keep an eye here on Prep Spin. And thanks to, again, to uh, Mingy Beef Jerky, our title sponsor, and also to uh, Bluegrass Orthopedics, where we're live here in the BGO studio. So long, everybody.